You are watching Christ's Commission Fellowship. Changing lives for eternity. I grew up in a different faith and was not fully aware of what was considered a sin other than theft and murder. I was a bully and insisted on having my own way in everything. I hurt people for no apparent reason. It was my ambition to become more popular and to have more money. So in high school, I sold pornographic materials, got involved in drugs, and became part of fraternity. One time, I bought a gun inside our campus that could cost me to be kicked out. Because of that incident, I was transferred to a, different, uh, to a Christian school where I first heard about Christ. But despite of this, I will still do things in my own terms. When it was time for me to go to college, I received a varsity scholarship and I chose to study at a school where I knew there would be lots of women. I even had about four to five girlfriends all at once from different schools. Also, during college, I was invited by my varsity teammate to eat at a friend's house. I was surprised because we were headed to an affluent village. My friend and the male owner of the house left me for several minutes while we were eating. When they came back and we were about to leave, the owner of the house handed me some money. I was pleasantly surprised by this and told my friend that I wanted to go back because not only was I given delicious food, I have also been given cash just like that. The owner of the house asked my friend to ask me if I were up to the idea of earning money easily. My friend said that all I had to do was lay down and let this guy do what he wanted with my body. Then I would have money in return. I tried it and earning was good, so I thought, why not? It was just a job for me where I can earn more, so I took it even if I, wasn't, if I was not attracted to men. One time, I was invited to a, diff, to a friend <clears throat> by a, a friend to attend Sunday service in CCF. <clears throat> Initially, we would always arrive late and catch the tail, of, tail end of the service, but since I started to get curious, I asked if we can come early to enjoy the whole message. I also became very interested to attend a discipleship group. I signed up online and was soon assigned to a group. The Lord began to speak through His words to me, and in 2012, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. God opened my eyes to the truth about worship and how I ought to honor Him with my body. I began to go easy with cursing, and soon enough, I altogether stopped my immoral lifestyle. The Lord spoke to me in 1 Timothy 6.10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many grips. And in Matthew 6.24, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Lord used these verses to point out my ungodly desires and direct me to purity in heart and body. I became thirsty and hungry for the Word of God. I had a passion for learning that was never there before. I, had, I devoured the Bible like my life depended on it. I used to find Bible studies groups, boring, and singing unto the Lord with arms high odd, but soon I found those to be a source of joy and comfort. Some friends even asked me if I was going crazy as I suddenly cannot speak anything else but Jesus. I wanted to have more Christians, friends, so I prayed and volunteered for traffic team, singles ministry, and sports ministry. It was there that I discovered the joy of serving. My discipleship group leader also encouraged me to start my own group. I had so many excuses 
that first, but by God's grace, I now leading seven men. Praise God. Through God's transforming work, people began to see who I have become in Christ. I started to become bolder and more open with my faith, especially on how the Lord changed my life. I am Nate Santos, and I now live a life committed to follow Jesus and please Him all the days of my life. To God be the glory. So ngayon po tayo po yung magpapatuloy sa ating series on Truth Matters. Paulit-ulit natin narinig yan that truth, are, truth is very important. Tonight, we will be discussing about experiencing God's transformation. So pakisabi sa tabi mo, experience God's transformation. Huwag mo lang siyang pakinggan. Di ba, minsan nakakaano, no? pag nakinig tayo, pag lunes at linggo, parang wow, yes, God is great. Pagdating ng lunes, ay, ba't ganito? Parang wala na si God. Martes, ay, iba na naman yung problema natin. Parang ibang-iba yung experiences natin dun sa mga narinig natin. Di ba? Bakit nagkakaganon? Ayan, kaya nga, may mga principles po sa Bible to help us understand how, he, how God transforms people. And oftentimes, as we desire to be transformed, Sometimes we are not willing really to do our part. Yes, God is sovereign, but we have responsibilities to do. Kasi yan ang, yan ang mystery sa, bay, sa, sa bagay ng Diyos. He is sovereign, but we have responsibility. Meron kang role na gagawin. Okay? So, tingnan po natin. Ano pa ito? Now, tingnan po natin itong chapter 9. Because we're in chapter, Acts chapter 9. Now, soul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord and went to the high priest. Now, sino to? Si Saul. Sinong Saul ito? He is the same Saul in Acts 7.58 kung saan doon nila tinatapon yung, iniiwan yung robe para batuhin si Stephen ng mga, mga kalaban ni Stephen. Iniiwan sa kanya, sa kanya pinagkatiwala. This is the same guy in Acts chapter 8. Yung chapter 8 na kung saan talagang Pinersecute niya yung mga Christians, kaya nagkalat sila. Ngayon, itong si Saul, dahil wala na yung mga Christian halos sa Jerusalem, nagtakbuhan na sa iba-ibang lugar, napansin niya, susundan niya pa rin. Pupunta pa rin siya sa Damascus. And because Damascus is about 150 miles or 200 plus kilometers away from Jerusalem, so, iba na yung ano, political authority doon. So, he had to receive a letter from other groups doon para maging siya na, auto, na authorization, para ma-fulfill niya yung pag, paghuhuli sa kanila. So, kumingi siya ng letter. Isipin niyo, ganun siya kasama, ganun siya katindi, parang hindi, parang, parang gabaga sa niya, sabi niya sa ano, hindi kita tatantanaan, parang ganun eh. Narinig niyo na yan? Parang hindi, hahabulin, hahabulin ko kayo. Yun na sinasabi niya. Now, Kung tinan niya yung salita, still breathing threats. Biruin inyo, yan na ang buhay niya. Hininga niya ang takuti ng mga Christians. Nakakita na kayong ganyan tao? Grabe no? Parang pag nakita mo yan, parang terorista yan. Sa totoo lang, the right term to, ex- to describe him, he is a religious terrorist. Ngayon, ito alam niyo si Saul, ano ba ito? Masamang tao ba talaga to? Talaga bang walang niya ba talaga to? Hindi. Sa totoo lang, hindi lang siya single-minded in his pursuit to destroy Christians. He was a scholar. Tingnan niyo po, sabi ng Bible. Sabi niya, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia. Aba, Roman citizen pa. Yung ibig sabihin ng Roman citizen during that time, parang inisip niyo, aba, sikat ito. American citizen pa ito. Ayan, siya, Roman citizen. So, by, but brought up in this city, educated. Hindi lahat ng tao nakakapag-aral at hindi lang basta educated. Educated under whom? Gamaliel. Ibig sabihin, wow, hindi lang to basta-basta ng ano, ano, iba to. Nasa top 3 universities ito ng Pilipinas. Parang okay, top 3 universities ng, ng Amerika. Sabi natin, taga Harvard pa ito. Di ba? Big time. Now, Strictly according to the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, just as you all are today. I persecuted this way. Itong way na to, referring to those who are followers of Jesus Christ, kasi si Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Remember? So, this way, to the death, binding and putting both men and women into prisons. Hindi biro tong tao na to. Hindi lang... Is, hindi naman to yung bobo lang na, na walang naiintindihan, galit lang siya sa mga tao, parang dahil hindi siya manalo sa debate, yayariin niya, hindi. Matalino ito. 
Hindi to basta-basta. He was a scholar. Hindi lang siya scholar. Among all the Jewish believers, yung mga Jewish na hindi Christian, ha? yung mga Jewish na ang kanilang paniniwala ay Judaism. Top ito, he seemed to be the saint of that particular belief. Bakit? Tingnan nyo naman, sabi niya. I am circumcised the eighth day of the nations of Israel. Ba- Alam nyo ba sa Hudyo, para maging kabahagi ka ng Diyos, kailangan mas- masircumcise ka on the eighth day. Ngayon, ginaya ng iba, nagpapasircumcise. Sa Pilipinas, nagpapasircumcise tayo, pero hindi natin naintindihan ang ibig sabihin. Ang intindi ng Pilipino para tumangkad. Kaya hindi eighth day, eighteenth year. <laughs> pero yun ang totoo. Minsan nakalan lang, yun ang pampatangkad ng bata. Hindi ho. Nagkataon lang, karamihan na nagpapasircumcise sa Pilipinas, eh yung age na dalaki na sila. Nagkakanilan tayo. Now, tuloy tayo. Pero had nothing to do with religious belief. Now, of the tribe of Benjamin. Alam niya pa kung saan siya nang galing. A Hebrew of Hebrews as to the law, a Pharisee. Alam niyo mga Pharisee, they memorize the law. Hindi lang ho yan 10 commandments, kundi 600 plus na commandments. Ang dami-dami, memorize yan. And as to zeal, a persecutor of the church. Look at the words. As to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. Wow! Pag tinignan mo, morality ng law, wala. Wal, sinusunod niya lahat. Nagkakanindihan. Memorize niya, sinusunod niya lahat. Mabait na tao ito. Hindi siya talaga nesali, masama dapat. Kanya lang, he was persecuting the church. Kaya nga itong taon to, bagamat parang mabait, terorista. Alam nyo, maraming ganyan, no? Karamihan ng, mara, alam nyo bang karamihan ng kaaway ng Ebanghelyo? Hindi naman necessarily mamamatay tao o kaya kriminal. Alam nila agad kailangan nila eh. Mas nakakatakot yung mga religious. Kasi feeling nila, Hoy, mabait kami. Hindi namin kailangan ng Savior. Alam na namin yan. Nula ng pagkabata namin. Dito na kami pinanganak. Dito na kami mamamatay. Nakaka-storbo ka sa mga panalangin ko. Ganyan na mga religious eh. Parang, Ay, ang dami rin alam sa Bible. Hindi mo rin masasabing hindi alam. Mas nakakatakot yung mga ganong tao. Nagkakaninan tayo, mas madali lang tanggihan si Jesus kasi isip nila, bakit ko kailangan si Jesus? Kasi alam nila, religious na sila. Kaya, ito lang ang amazing. So, siya terorista. Now, tinan naman po ninyo isa pang tao. Kasi buong Acts 9 yan eh. Isa pang tao makikita naman ninyo. Now, there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. Oh, Christian na siya. But Ananias answered, Lord, kasi sabi ni Lord sa kanya, puntahan mo si, ano, si Saul para si Saul, eh, pag-pray mo. Sabi niya, Lord, tika muna, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he did to your saints at Jerusalem. And sabi niya, and here he has authority from the chief priest to, bl- to bind all who call on your name. So this guy was a little bit terrified. Tama? Takot siya. Kasi, Pag may pray ko si Paul, Lord, nabalitaan ko na yan. Ang dami niya nang inusig sa, per, sa, ano, sa Jerusalem. Tapos ang dito yan para usigin kami. So talagang takot din tong tao na to. Ano napansin ninyo? May terorista, mayroong terrified na tao. Regardless of anong condition mo sa pagkatao mo, isang bagay lang nakita ko. Pareho silang kinuha, inahanap ng Diyos. Okay ba yan? Now, kung ka feeling mo parang wala ka ng pag-asa, parang ang sama-sama mong tao, maaaring hindi ka naman ganun kasama, kanya lang, minsan hindi ka ane sa asawa mo, o kaya naman hindi ka ane sa magulang mo, o kaya hindi ka ane sa anak mo, o kaya naman, lagi kang tulog sa service. Regardless, ano si sabi ng Diyos? Hindi ako na, I am no respecter of person. What I'm trying to say is this, Hindi ako naghahanap ng garaganto lang dapat ang kabait ang kahinahanap ko. Hindi. Regardless, God can make use of you. Nagkakanindihan tayo? Huwag na huwag mong kakalimutan. Huwag mo sasabihin, eh, mahina ako, mahiyain ako, hindi ako marumagsalta. God can make use of you. Kahit anong klasing tao ka, God can use you. Sa totoo lang, si Lazarus nga patay na, ginamit pa ni Lord eh. Regardless of your age, regardless of your status in life or economic status, regardless of anything na iniisip mo na impossible that causes barriers for you to be used by God. Let me tell you again, God is no respecter of person. He is very much willing to use you. Okay, Ben? 
Now, bulik tayo. Now, now ito po, kaya si Ananias kinamit ng Lord. Meron pang isang tao. Now, when he came to Jerusalem, he was trying to associate with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. But there was another guy, nakakatawa, but Barnabas took hold of him and brought him to the apostles and described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road. What have you noticed? Ito namang si Barnabas, he's a terrific guy. Noon pa lang sa Acts chapter 4, he was willing to give up his property. Nalala nyo? He's the same guy. And from Joseph, he was now known as Barnabas, the man of encouragement. Ano ibig sabihin? Yung tao na yan, papapansin, lahat ng klase ng tao, mahal ng Diyos. Tinatanggap niya. Mapaterrorista ka, mapaterrified ka, or terrific ka, gagamitin ka ng Diyos. Okay, Ben? Aling ka dyan? O, maaaring sabi mo, terrific. <laughs> terrible. Baka terrible. Pwede naman. Pero ang ibig ko sabihin, regardless of that, gagamitin ka ng Lord. Now, listen to this. Kaya ho, mapapansin nyo, lahat ng taong yan ginamit ng Diyos. Pero punta tayo sa pinakasukdulan kasi napaka-imposible nito eh. At itong bagay na ito, madutuwa kayo, pati dinaanan lahat yan. Si, si, ano, si Ananias, terrified, naging terrific. Si Barnabas, terrific na talaga. Okay na kaya niya? Ngayon, si, si Paul, terorista na, na terrified din at naging terrific. Now, tingnan niyo lang po para makita niyo. While as he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Bagsak siya! Takot! Ano niyo? Takot! You become terrorist, he become terrified. And so, so, while are you persecuting me? Kaya alam niyo, itong amazing sa Diyos. Kung ako, sa panahon ni Paul, walang magsashare kay Paul. Ikaw, will you have the courage to share to Paul about the gospel? O, pag-isipan niyo. Yung tipong alam mong papatayin ka niya, huhulihin ka niya, sasira mo pa ng gospel. Kaya alam nyo, sabi, ito kasi ang natutunan ko sa buhay. Yung sharing of the gospel, yung pagiging Christian ng isang tao, hindi natin yan trabaho. Ang trabaho natin mag-share lang. Yung para maging Christian yung taong yan, trabaho ng Diyos yan. Okay? Kaya ang success of evangelism is just sharing the gospel and leave the result to God. No one in this world can really make you be Christian. Kanyari, mayroon lumapit sa akin, Pastor, dahil sa'yo, naging Christian ako. Sorry, hindi yan totoo. Bakit? Ako nag-share lang. Ikaw, si Lord ang tumawag sa'yo. Okay? Kasi, who can convert? Who can really bring regeneration in your life? That's God's work. Nagkakadid yan tayo. I cannot do that for you. I, nobody else. Kaya walang mag-friend sabihin, ako naging nagpa-Christian sa kanya. Ako nagpa-Christian sa kanya. Gusto mong tumigil ka nga. Ay, hindi mo pwedeng gawin ng Christian ang sino mang tao. It is a work of God. Nagkakadiyan? Soul work of the Lord. Now, dahil, dahil walang magsishare kay Paul, itong amazing kay God. He can do and He can reach out to people. Ngayon, as you share the gospel at naging Christian yung tao, God is sharing with you the joy. Okay, man? Ngayon, to some of us, na hindi naging sharing ng blessing, hindi mo nakita yung joy. Now, itong masama. Kaya namang gawin ng Diyos yan, hindi ka kasali. But He chose to share it with you. He chose to share it with us. Okay ba? This is the challenge for all of us, friends. Si Lord, has yet at work. Sinibigyan niya lang tayo ng chance to cooperate with Him. Because we are part of the body. Amen? Now, kaya po napaka-amazing. Ano nangyari kay Paul? Hindi na nangyari kay Paul. From ter- terrorist, terrified, now he's also terrific. But Saul kept increasing in strength and confounding the Jews who live at Damascus by proving that this Jesus is the Christ. Noon, ang pangalan ni Paul, parang Saul, galing sa hari, pangalan ng hari, mayabang, matapang, di ba? Ngayon, naging Paul. Bakit Paul? Little. Parang sasabi niya, maliit lang ako. I'm too small. And he was transformed from terrorists who's so powerful, but he was terrified when he saw Jesus and fell before the feet of the Lord and become terrific for the Lord. Became little and allowed Jesus to be big in his life. Nakakanidihan? God can transform the worst person possible to someone great in the kingdom of God. Hindi ho sa mata ng tao, but in the eyes of the Lord. People may think that you're nothing, but in the eyes of God, if you're doing and living exactly how God wanted you to live, I'm telling you, you are so great in the Lord. Okay ba yan? 
May hindi yung basis, uy, ang galing-galing mo. People might be surprised. I might be surprised in heaven. Naakala na, ang galing-galing naman ito pagdating sa langit, yung taong hindi pinapansin, yun ang great sa Diyos. Nakakanindihan po. Kaya itapaka-importante ito. So, how can we experience God's transformation? Kaya to be transformed from terrorist to terrified to terrific, we need Christ. We need Christ. Ang problema ng maraming tao ganito, when they say, I'm a Christian, I belong to Jesus, they, not, they do not really understand what it really meant. Yung bang parang, oh, Christian ako, but there is no transformation. Because real Christians, they experience God's transformation. Bakit ka mo? We do not come to Jesus Christ by our own will. Oftentimes, sabi ng Panginoong Iso Kristo mismo, no one will come to me unless my Father brings them to me. In other words, it was something supernatural. It's something, it was an act of God to cause us to come to Jesus. And how would you know that Jesus, God is touching you? Iba sa inyo, as you were listening, oh, natatamaan ka. As you were listening, Lord, forgive me. Lord, lumalapit ka kay Jesus. Pero wag mong tigasan. Maybe some of you, the Lord is already telling you. Or maybe, oh, anak, kinakausap ka in so many ways. But sometimes we ignore them. We just don't listen to them. Baka magulat ka. One day, wala nang ganyang quickening sa iyong puso. Now, ito pong napaka-importante. When God touches your heart, and when you come to God, and you feel, wag mo na sabihin, ay, nahiya ako, masusunog ako dyan, ay, nahiya ako, nah- hindi ako tatanggapin ng Diyos, lagi na lang ako nagkakamali. Ano sabi ni Jesus? In the same passage, John chapter 6, everyone who comes to me, I will always welcome them. In a new century version, new century version yan, ha? I will always welcome them. Kaya minsan, kapi mo, Lord, nahiyan na po ako, ang dami ko ng pagkakamali, lagi na lang ako malapit sa'yo. Let me tell you this, hindi nagsasawa si God sa'yo. Hanggat hindi pa siya bumabalik, binibigyan ka pa ng tsansa na bumalik. Nagkakaninihan tayo. Hello? Kaya, itong napaka-importanting bagay. So, what does it mean to be in Christ? What does it mean? Now, listen to this. Tinay sabi ni Paul. Sabi niya, but when God, who had set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. It was the Lord who revealed Himself to me. So, as He revealed Himself, God wants us to confess our submission to Jesus. Pag ganun sa amin, confess ka na, tinan nyo ha, di ba? Terorista siya. Ang hininga niya, ang kalakasan niya, ang buhay niya, ay para takuti ng mga Christian at pigilan sila mag-preach. Nakakalinan? Yan si Paul. Kaya ang word yan, breathing threats. Nakakalinan tayo. Now, Sabi niya ganyan, and ask letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Can you imagine kung gano'n siya kadesidido para ano, takutin at talagang hulihin ng mga Christian? Willing siyang magbiyahe ng anin na araw para lang hulihin sila. Oh, gano'n kayo kadesidido? Eh, hindi basta biyahe yan. Ha? Either lakad yan o kabayo at isipin nyo nasa Middle East, desert yan. Init-init. Nagkakanin yan. O, tuloy tayo. And tingnan nyo nangyari. Now, gusto ko i-parallel sa inyo kasi yung accounts ni Luke, yung accounts ni Luke sa Acts 9, yung accounts ni Paul when he was testifying at the temple at accounts ni Paul sa Acts 26 nag-testifying before Agrippa. Now, baka sabihin nyo, eh, bakit iba-iba yung kanyang sinasabi? No, pare-pareho yan. Kanya lang, yung nagdadagdagan ng ibang details kasi ganun talaga. Minsan, yung, kunyari, kung ako yung nagre-research, ito lang nakuha ko. Tama? Kung ako'y nagsasalita at magsalta ulit ako sa panibagong pagkakataon, baka medyo ako madadagdag na detalye. For example, kung nag-attend ka ng 3 o'clock, mapapansin mo may nadagdag sa 6 o'clock. O kaya may nawala sa 6 o'clock na nasabing sa 3 o'clock. Kaya minsan sa sabihin, mas maganda ito kasi naririnig ko ito. O, alam ka, sa 6 o'clock may hindi nagdag, pero maganda rin. Hindi ko alam ko, alam, alam gusto mo. Well, alam mo ganoon, ganoon din kay Paul. So, when he was sharing, it's but natural na meron na dadagdag. E, kaya ho, ang ganda naman, they were all in one book. So makikita nyo yung mga kulang at mag, hindi para magkontra-kontra but to complement the information para makita mo yung buong picture. Okay ba yan? Kaya ganyan magbasa ng Bible. No? Listen to this. As he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus. A light from heaven flashed around him. Yung ilaw. Now, tinan nyo ha? Kailan dumating yan? Bilang may ilaw. Flash. Parang, parang, parang nag, alam mo yan, kumuha ang picture. Parang bilis. Yan, para ano. Kasi pagka-click, baka, ay, gaganyan ka lang. Pero, ito, nagulat. Kasi talaga, ito na. 
Paano na kaya, gano kaya kaliwanag yung ilaw na yun? Kasi, kat kailan nangyari? Tinan nyo ha, the mass about noon time. Noon time. Wow! Anong klaseng liwanag yan? Kung tanghaling tapat, ang liwanag nun, katawag sa tagad, katirikan ng araw. Tapos mayroon pang liwanag na lalabas? Sobrang liwanag yan! Kung nakapunta na kayo, nakapunta na ako sa Abu Dhabi, nakita ko yan. Yung pagdoon at tanghali, nako, maglagay ka ng itlog sa ulo, luto. Ganon kainit! Ang liwanag, talagang kailangan mo mag-sunglass na madilim. Di ba? Talagang kailangan. Now, isipin niyo. Now, sabi, a very bright light suddenly flashed from heaven all around me. Pinapal, binabalutan siya ng liwanag. Sa kanya naman testimony, pareho pa. Pare. I saw on the way a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining all around me. When he was beginning to describe the sun, ang liwanag, mas maliwanag pa sa araw. Nakakita na kayo ng ganong liwanag? Pag nakakita kayo ng ganong liwanag, sobrang makakabulag na liwanag yun. Pag nakapagpas binabalutan ka, it might be a spark in a moment, parang kidlat, ganyan. Pero para sa, sa pangyayari, parang napakahabang panahon. Because you're entering a different realm. Kaya grabe ito, sa sobrang liwanag, kaya bulag siya. Natinan niya nangyari. And obviously, dito he fell. Dito, eh, I fell. Dito, all fallen. Laglag sila. Lahat sila dapa. Because the moment you see God, the moment, talagang dapa ka, kasi you'll never understand. No wonder, walang tatagal doon na parang dilim, parang siyang laser. Nagkakadiyan tayo. Yan ang description niya. Now, tuloy tayo ngayon. Sabi niya, and he said, who are you, Lord? Yan. The first thing that you need to know before you confess who Jesus is to you as your Lord, tinama, kilala mo ba si Jesus? Kaya yung tanong niya, who are you, Lord? Kaya sabi niya, and he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. <laughs> Ang bait ng Panginoon. Ngayon ko lang din lalo na intindihan ito, no? Kasi it helps me a lot to be transformed in my whole life. Bakit ka mo? Tinasabi ng Lord, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Balik nga tayo. Sino pinipersecuti, Paul? Sino yung pinipersecuti, Paul? Bago siya nakita si Jesus. The church! The believers! Tama? Pat sabi ni Jesus, why are you persecuting me? Parang sinasabi ni Jesus, alam mo, Paul, pinipersonal mo ako. Hindi sila pinipersecute mo ako. Tayo magtapat. Kaya humanap ka ng kasukat mo. Eto ako ngayon. Oh, naiintindihan niyo na? Alin, bigla ako naisip nito. Ako ba initin ng ulo ko pag nainsulto ko? Nainitin ng ulo ko kapag ka na feel ko na di disrespect ako? Bigla ako na naiisip, teka muna, pat ka magagalit kung na di disrespect ka. Kung ikaw kay, kay Jesus at na disrespect ka because of your being a Christian, hindi ikaw din disrespect si Jesus. Tama ba? Hello? Kunyari, anak ka, mabait ka, masunurin ka. Tapos, inaabuso ka ng magulang mo. Sinong inaabuso niya? Dahil ginagawa mo para kay Jesus. Sino inaabuso ng magulang? Si Jesus. Di, ang laking lagot siya kay Jesus. Tama mali? Hello? Ngayon ikaw, Christian. Dinadaya ka sa transaction dahil alam na Christian ka. Kayang-kaya kang dayain. Kasi mga Christian, bagamat ma- minsan mababait sila sobra at nawawala yung katalinuhan. Minsan. So, nilaloko sila. Naisipin mo, dahil sa niloko ka, dahil Christian ka, sino niloko nila? Si Jesus. Wala kang talo eh. Bakit? Si Jesus ang, kaya biglang, ba't ako nga, ba't pa ako magagalit? Si Jesus naman ang kalang niyayari. Hello? Andiyan pa kayo? Ngayon, babae ka, nagsisilbi ka sa asawa mo. Tapos inaabuso ka naman. Nanloloko pa siya. Oh, sino ang giniloloko niya? Si Jesus. Kasi you're doing everything to Jesus. So in other words, these people who are trying to attack you, trying to destroy you, trying to malign you, if you're doing it for the Lord and you're living for Jesus and Jesus is your Lord, then they're attacking your Lord, not you. Bigla kang relax. Andiyan ka pa? So in other words, habang sasalta ako dito and I'm doing this for Jesus, natulog ka. Siya tinulugan mo? Si Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Yari ka ngayon. Lagot ka kay Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. Balik tayo dito. Now, ito ang amazing. 
Now, if you truly believe that Jesus is your Lord, who are you, Lord? Jesus. And it, it made him very clear, Jesus, the Nazarene, whom you are persecuting. And I am Jesus, whom you are per- Talagang same. Hindi nagbago. Now, listen to this. Kung talagang siya na yung Panginoon mo, some people say, I believe, I believe. I, Jesus, you are my Savior. Meron kasun- malalaman mo, sabi ganun. But get up and enter the city. Alam nyo, nung sinabi niya yan, may tinanong pala si Paul. Ang sabi ni Paul, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Get up and go into Damascus. Tapasin niyo ba? This is where it really means, it parang, ito yung sabi mo ng yung, yung reality. When the push comes to shove, listen to this, the reality of our Christianity will be so evident. How? Kung talagay siya yung Panginoon mo, Lord, what do you want me to do? nakakanidihan. Hindi yung, kasi ang Christian, hindi na yung siyang nasusunod. Kasi I've been crucified with Christ. Eh. It is no longer I who live. Kaya nga, now that you are my Lord, what do you want me to do? Nakakanidihan. Marami claiming to be Christians, but they don't care what God wants. They don't care what Jesus wants. They don't care what God's priority is. Wala silang pakialam. If you tell them, ah, basta Christian ako. Huh? Anong gusto ni Lord? Basta. Christian ako. Hindi. Alam mo ba? Kaya nga, kaya nga, we don't come to sa service para, o oh, kasi, dapat gawin natin yung duty natin. Atin tayo na service. Ay, salamat. Bawas na kasalanan natin. Hindi. The reason why we come to the service, we want to listen to the Word, we want to study the Word of God, we read it devotionally. Why? Because I want to know what He wants. I want to know His will in my life. I want to do what He wants because He is my Lord. In other words, when we say, He is my Lord, He is my God, then we're saying, He is now the chief executive officer of our lives. Siya na yung, He calls the shot. Hindi na tayo. Kasi ang dali natin sabihin, Siya ang Panginoon, pero hindi natin siya sinusunod. Kaya tingnan nyo, maraming sa saan Christian, they st- insist on their own terms, they insist on their own way in worshiping the Lord because they are not really submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Kaya ito po malungkot. Tingnan nyo, sabi ni Paul, yung para maintindihan yung message, ito yung message si Paul, sabi niya, rescuing you from the Jewish people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. Wow! What is happening, Jesus? Once they believe in me, once they were forgiven and sanctified, listen to this, they will no longer be submitting themselves to Satan. Alam ang bigat na sabi niya, huh? You will deliver them from the dominion of Satan? Lahat ng wala kay Jesus, naka, nasa ilalim ng jablo. Hindi ako nagsabi niya, yun, nabasa niyo. Kasi, you know, and from the dominion of Satan to God. Naalala niyo yung memory verse natin? Naalala niyo? And He rescued us from the domain of darkness to the kingdom of His beloved Son in whom we, find re- in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Naalala niyo? Yan ang Christianity. Kaya nga si Satan, simple lang eh. Alam niyo, sabi nga nila, di ba? Sabi natin, yung, yung pinaka-golden rule ng satanic Bible, just do what you want. Just do what you will. Parang, parang, parang sinabi niya kay Eva. Sabi ni, na ano, totoo ba na hindi niya pwedeng ka, kainin tong prutas na ito? Sabi ni Eva, oh, di nga pwedeng hawakan eh. Hindi totoo yan. Gawin mo yung gusto mo. Gawin mo. Ganon si Satanas. Gawin mo, parang magiging kang Diyos. Biruin mo. You just do what you want. Because if you are under God, if God is your God, you cannot just do what you want. You have to do what He wants. Nagkain din tayo. Yun ang sinasabi ng Diyos. Kaya nga ho na, kakagulat. Ito sabi niya. Tapos, tingnan niyo po. Kaya hindi ho yan nagbago. Now, Kaya naman si Paul, yun ang kanyang pinipreach. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. He regained his sight and he got up and was baptized. In other words, he declared, he proclaimed that he is no longer living. He died and rose again with a new life in Christ. Now, tuloy tayo. And sabi niya, niya he rescued her from the domain of darkness and transferred her to the kingdom of his beloved son. Amazing. Kaya ho, ano sabi ng Lord? 
Kung gusto maligtas, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For, for with the heart a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation. Kasi kung talagang sa Panginoon ka, you submit and say, Lord, I cannot save myself. I thank you that you died for me. I am totally yours. I'm yours, Lord. Anong gusto mo? I'm yours. Yan ang Christian. Nakakanidihan tayo? No, tuloy tayo. Ang sabi ng kaya, kaya naman, he kept on proving that Jesus is the Christ. Now, amazingly, kung talagang kay Lord ka na, you want His will, you don't just read His word. You begin to pray. So you humble yourself through prayer. Kaya tinan si Paul. Balikan natin. Saul got up from the ground, God bagsak siya. And through his, though, though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. Bulag! And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Fasting siya bigla. Di siya makakita, fasting siya. Now, now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. Ah, itong si Ananias nagpe-pray. Sabi ng Lord, puntahan mo si, si, si Paul dahil nagpe-pray din siya. Tama? While Paul was praying, meanwhile, tingnan nyo, while he's praying, tingnan nyo naman sa kabilang bahagi. And he has seen a vision, a man named Ananias, come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Ano ba siya? While Paul was praying, the Lord was telling to Ananias, okay, Paul is praying, go to him. Ito naman si Paul, while praying, sabi niya, while you're praying, Ananias will go to you. Tama? He will pray for you. Napansin niyo man? Amazing, no? Kaya pa nagpe-pray, parang ganito yan. Lord, pautakin mo ko. Sabi dito, wag. <laughs> so, hindi sila. Dako, ano nga? Parang, wow, ang galing yung, yung conversation. May Diyos eh. Di ba? Alam kaya ako sinabi yan kasi may lumapit din sa akin, Pastor, sabi ni Lord, papautakin mo rin ako. <laughs> Nung nagpe-pray ako, wala siya sinabi. <laughs> kasi ito, amazing, oh. Nagtagpo sa prayer, oh. Nag-uusap. Tama? Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi noong naging Christian ka na, noong takot tayo mag-pray sa totoo lang, we want somebody else to pray for us. We want somebody else to do that for us. Tama? Kasi baka masunog ako, baka hindi niya ako pakinggan, hindi niya sasagutin prayer ko, kaya please pray for me, Pastor, kasi ikaw mas mabait ka, mas malapit ka sa kanya. I'm telling you that's not true. Now listen to this. Bakit? The moment you become Christian, sabi ng Bible, you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again. Hindi ka na takot. Sabi niya, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father! Now, sino dito ang takot na lumapit sa tatay pag may kailangan? Walang umamin katabi yung tatay niya. Anyway, <laughs> may mga taong takot lumapit sa tatay. Bakit? Dahil kailangan, oh, ano na naman kailangan mo? Ano na naman kama? No, 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 no. So, yun ba takot? And obviously, pag gano'n ang tatay mo, ayaw mo, takot ka, tama ba? Sabi ni Jesus, ibang-iba yung tatay mo sa langit. Bakit? Kung sakali lang, yung tatay mo na, mabait na, if you ask for bread, will he give you stone? Di ba? Obviously not. If you ask for fish, will he give you serpent? Sabi niya, if your evil fathers, look at the word, if your evil fathers know how to give good gifts to your children, to their children, how much more your heavenly Father. Napansin niyo ba yan? Ang sinasabi ng Diyos, yung tatay mo sa langit, hindi mo kailangan matakot dahil ibang-iba siya. Paglapit mo, anak, alika ka nila. Sa totoo lang, naalala niyo yung, yung picture ng prodigal son? Niba? Dami ang magsisisi na ako sabi ko, I have sinned against heaven and you against you, Lord, my Father. Pagpakita pa ng tatay, anong ginawa ng tatay? Tumakbo na. Niyakap! Hinalikan! Hindi pa siya nagsasabi ng Sorry. Hindi pa siya nagsasabi na, I have sinned against heaven and you. Wala pa siya sinabi ganun. Don't accept me as your son anymore. Wala pa siya sinasabi ganun. Niyakap na siya, hinalikan na siya, at ano, pakaling sinabi, teka muna, may speech pa ako. Hindi na halos pinakinggan eh. Kunin mo yung balabal, kunin mo yung singsing, kunin mo yung sandalya. That's our Father. 
Yun ang sinasabi ng Lord, the moment you become a Christian, He has given you the right to become His child. And as child, you can come to our Father anytime. Kaya nga, alam niyo po, marami hindi nagtatransform sa buhay. We never prayed. Because the more you talk to a person, kung lagi mo siyang kausap, doon kayo nagkakaroon ng resemblance lalo. Nagkakalinihan tayo? Kaya nga, kailangan mo lagi siyang kausap. Kaya yun ang sinasabi ng Lord, learn to pray. Not only that, because that's part of being on relying on the Holy Spirit. Bakit ka mo? Tingnan niyo ha. Ito na. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he's a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before where? Gentiles, kings, and the sons of Israel. Ba, medyo mabigat tong ministry ni Paul, ha? Lalapit siya sa mga ano, kings, sa Gentiles. Ba, mahirap to. And sons of Israel, magkaiba to. Ano pang sabi niya? So Ananias departed and entered the house. And brothers Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Bakit sinasabi ni God yun? Because sabi ng Panginoon, you cannot do ministry without the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, sabi nga niya, Panginoon, oh, this is the word of the Lord of Tourism of Bel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord of hosts. No, kaya si Paul sabi niya, if you want sabi niya to, to, ano, to, not to satisfy the desire of the flesh, sabi ni Paul, walk by the Spirit. Paano ba maglakad by the Spirit? Pa, paano ba mag-walk by the Spirit? Kanya rin tayong dalawa magkasama. Adam, saan ba tayo pupunta? Samahan mo ako. Kanya rin. Kasi ikaw, ikaw dapat ang Holy Spirit, ha? ako yung sasama sa'yo. Lakad tayo, lakad tayo. So, sasama lang ako, walk by the Spirit. Just in the Holy Spirit, o oh, dito tayo, o oh, kausapin mo siya, kausapin mo siya. Eh, hindi ko kaya yun. Tulog siya eh. Mahirap kausapin niyan. Ang sabi ng Holy Spirit, huwag ka magala, lagi gisingin ko. Ako magano. Tapos, hihihipan ng Holy Spirit yung tinga. Oh, gising na. Oh, sab- ano sasabihin ko? Hindi ko alam. Ano gusto mo? Tatanungin ko. Tat- gusto mo magtanong siya? Sabi niya, ba- magtanong ka. Mag- tatanong siya. So, magkakaroon kami ng connection. And the Holy Spirit will work. That's how to work. Kaya pray without ceasing. Kaya, thank you, Adam, ha? Kasi ang dami tao ay isip na, ano kaya yung walking by the Spirit? Yung kala, ayan, may Holy Spirit ako. Kung ganoon, sinasapian ka noon pag ganoon. Ito, you walk, you talk, you discuss with the Holy Spirit. Lord, paano ko ba siya sharean to? Paano ko kausapin to? Katulad nung, nung ano, may pumunta sa amin ng titinda. Sabi ko, paano ko siya sharean? Kinuha ko yung card, na, yung death, that's light, nung magkabi dito. Sabi ko, ano nababasa mo? Death, ano? Sabi ko, ay, kamuta yan. Sabi ko, ito pero may regalo ang Diyos. Life. Oh, kinakalibutan naman ako. Oh. Diyos na yun eh. Para lang nung yun, babasahin mo, kinalibutan ka na. Sobra naman to. Kung baka ako lang yan, OA naman to. Pero alam mo, may Holy Spirit na gumagalaw eh. O sabi ko, o oh, sige, basahin mo na gusto to para hindi ka kalibutan ha. Nakuha natin. Kaya kailangan mo lang makinig eh. Kailangan mo lang makinig. Tuturuan ka niya, gagabayan ka niya. Kaya meron naman isa, magpapamasahe isang kapatiran. Sabi ko, eh yung nagpapamasahe, bago ako masahe, huwag mo kakalimutan ha, mahal na mahal ka na Jesus ha. Sabi ng mga kapatid, huwag ka magalala pastor, sisira ko siya ngayon. Oh. Yung sabihin, bahala ng Holy Spirit, sila lang mag-uusap. Naintindihan natin. Nabigyan ko na ng pampabunga, Diyos na yun, siya gumawa ng paraan. So in other words, you walk by the Spirit. Now, itong amazing sa Panginoon Diyos. God told us to make disciples, tama? You know why it's so important? Because the moment you begin to teach people, ikaw ang unang nakikinabang. I'll tell you, kaya nga yung letter I is instruct others to trust Jesus. Ha? Huh? Paano yan? Tinan si Paul. And immediately, he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. Now, tuloy pa tayo, verse 1. And all the hearing Him continued to be amazed. And we're saying, Is this not He who in Jerusalem destroyed those who called on this name, who had come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priest? Diba? Sino? Diba siya yun? Tapos sabi niya, But Saul kept increasing in strength, confounding the Jews who live at Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Christ. He just kept on talking. Bakit? Alam bakit? The more you preach, obviously, you have to study. And you study, you prepare yourself, you, you commune with God. Ikaw ang unang binabago. Ikaw unang inaayos. Alam niyo ba noon, noong nagtuturo ako first time, alam niyo hindi niyo ako makita nagpapatawa. Napakaseryoso kong tao. Nilagay ako, alam niyo kung ano oras, alas 5 ng madaling araw. Hindi <laughs> nagre-reklamo na, yung mga tao, pare-parehas lang, kokonte, sabi ko, ano ba ito? Ang dami, ang laki-laki ng lugar, hindi mapuno-puno, nagpe-pray ako. So, Lord, ano gagawin ko dito? Ano sagot ng Diyos sa akin? Anak, alam mo problema mo, hindi mo sila mahal eh. Hmm? 
Ma, paano hindi ko mahal? Hindi mo sila mahal eh. Iniisip mo lang yung itsura mo, yung posture mo. Dapat maayos, kailangan kilos mo. Kasi ayaw mong isipin, intindihin mo sila. Hindi yung naiintindihan mo yung sinasabi mo, kundi naiintindihan ba nila yung sinasabi mo. Di iyak ako, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng pagmamahal. Kaya doon ako nagsimulang magpatawa. Kasi alasin ko ang madaling araw. Mas, ba, mas matindi sila kaysa sa inyo. Sila, what is dito? Natutulog ka, tapos nagigising kang ganyan. Yun, hindi na talaga nagigising. Pagtapos na ng service. Di ba? At least dito, may pagganyan-ganyan ka pa. Gaganyan ka pa, ganyan. Di ba? Nilalaban mo pa. Doon, walang laban. Kasi ang aga-aga eh. Pero alam nyo, bait ng Diyos, pinuno niya yung lugar. 2,800 ang umaatin. Alas 5 na madaling araw. Oh, bakit? Pero ang una niyang tinuruan, ako muna, hindi sila. Kasi bakit? Ganong ginagawa ng Diyos. Kaya nga sabi ng Lord, tinan ninyo. Ang amazing niya, make disciples, baptize them, teach them to observe. Eh kung hindi mo alam pa paano i-observe, pa paano may tuturo? You're the one who is being transformed first as you teach. Kaya marami sa atin, we're ask, asking God, Lord, baguhin mo ako, tulungan mo ako. Eh, hindi ka naman willing to cooperate with God. I want to make use of you, but you teach, you learn, you study, so that you would know how to observe them. Tama? Now, tuloy tayo. Kaya, ito ang amazing. Pero, alam nyo ba, hindi lagi nakakatuwa pa nagtuturo ka na, you will surely suffer for the Lord. Alam nyo ba, importante ito, tinyo, but soul kept increasing, proving Jesus is the Christ. Tinan nyo, ha? But when, even, and when many days had elapsed, the Jews plotted together to do away with him. Oh, gusto siyang patayin. Now, hindi lang yan. But their plot become known to Saul. They were also watching the gates day and night so that they might put him to death. Isipin mo yan, kung alam ni Paul at pinagmamas ng pa day and night sa gate, aabangan siya, inaabangan. Ayan si Paul. Kung ikaw si Paul, ito mapapatay sa akin. Ito mapapatay sa akin. Oh, sa akin. Para ang hirap natin ng ganung buhay. Tama? Pero you become more, instead of nagiging paranoid ka, ito papapatay, ito papapatay. Lord, di ko alam kung sino papatay. Kaya Lord, maglakad tayo parehas. Tulungan mo rito. And allow your name to be accomplished, allow your mission to be accomplished, O God, as you have said. Kaya tinan niyo ginawa ni Paul. Sabi niya, and he was talking and arguing. Sino ang ginawa niya? Kinausap niya the Hellenistic Jews. Kilala niya Hellenistic Jews? Naalala niyo mga bumato kay, kay Stephen? Naalala niya na si Paul? Kaya sabi niya, kaysa kung mausap ko kahit kanino, sabi ko naman yung mga kaibigan ko, mga Hellenistic Jews, tama? And they were attempting to put him to death. Pati sila, pati papatay na rin. Ganun pa rin, papatayin pa rin. Ba't inaalaw ng Diyos yun? Now listen to this. Tinan niyo ang naleso na tutunan ni Paul. Because sometimes a suffering is a blessing. It's not, you don't need to suffer with sufferings because suffering is a blessing. Kaya I always tell myself this. Don't, I always learn to gain from your pain. Okay ba yan? Because yung pain, sabi nga ng Bible, all things work for good. Tama ba? So yung pain is not really to hurt you, but in order for you to gain from it. Now listen to this. Ito na. Sabi ni Paul, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Anong sinasabi ni Paul? Laging isip ko si Jesus na. Laging auta ko kay Jesus. Bakit? Kasi persecuted, but I'm not forsaken by Jesus. Crushed, but you see, in every way, but I'm not crushed. Why? Because Jesus is with me. Laging dinaalala si Jesus. Dahil doon, all the more Jesus is being manifested in His life. Amazing, no? Lalo siya nagiging katulad ni Jesus. Now, tinan niyo po. Kaya sabi ng Bible sa James, ganito. Sabi ng Bible, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Endurance. Let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Ano siya sabi ng Diyos? Friends, ang problema ng tao, hindi resources. Ang kulang niya, Character, heart. Pag may endurance, wala kang kulang. Nakuha nyo? Parang ganito yan. Hindi sa pang-insulto sa anak ko, no? kasi malayo ang aming agwat when it comes to experience. Lumaki ako sa mahirap na pamilya, lumaki sa, ah, lumaki sa hirap na pamilya. Magkaiba yun. Mahirap at hirap. Okay? Now, ito po yun. So, since ako po na lumaki sa mahirap, gumagawa kami ng paraan sa bagay-bagay ng buhay. 
Nagkakintindihan. So, mayroon pong isang sirang ano, gamit sa bahay. Ang sabi sa kanya, ah, kunin mo itong ano, ano, gantong tools. Ay, hindi ko pa pwede, Papa. Hindi pa pwede. Kasi yan, iba yan. Walang ganyan. Wala tayong ganyan tools. Alam ko, kaya kunin mo itong tools na ito. Hindi nga pa pwede kasi ano, hindi mabubuksan ng ganyan yan. Niya. Look at this. Obviously, ang hinahanap niya is another resource, a tool, para mabuksan yun. Tama? But if you have the heart of endurance, hindi issue yun. Kaya nga anak, kunin mo na para mabuksan ko to. Huwag ka kasi muna magsalta na magsalta. Kasi alam nyo, naintindihan ko mga bata. Eh. Minsan, ang kala ng mga bata, dahil wala tayong mga bagong teknolohiya, yung matatanda, hindi marunong, hindi pa smart, walang alam sa buhay. Kaya, hindi na, kaya, pakinggan mo ka, hindi pe, pwede yan. Yun ang sinasabi. Nakakanid yan. Eh, hindi na alam, the heart changes everything. Kaya nung nabuksan na, pak, nabuksan. Yun sa tools sa hiningi ko, nabuksan. Sabi sa niya, ano, 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 nabuksan. Kaya iniwan niya ako. <laughs> kasi nang kasarpe. <laughs> Alas kador kasi talaga ako. Kaya lang, kaya yun ang isang bahaging masama na ginawa ko. Kaya sabi niya, umalis siya. Pero look at this. Most people, they easily give up. Because what? They were not trained through trials. They were not trained through sufferings. Ang suffering blessing yan ng Diyos. Nagkakanid yan? Di ba? Ang dami kong classmate doon, ang daming libro. Bumabagsak. Ako walang libro. Kaya lang, kasi dahil alam kong hinihiram ko yung libro sa library, kailangan ko nang basahin yun ng paspasan. At kailangan ko maintindihan. Kahit ano pang sitwasyon, nagpapasada ako ng tricycle, nagluluto ako ng paninda, kung ano-ano. Pero I need to read it so carefully and understandably bakit wala akong choice, wala akong libro. Suffering is a blessing. And don't ever waste your pain. Always gain from them. Okay? Now, kaya sabi ni Lord, tinamo, for to you, it has been granted for Christ's sake not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. It's a blessing. And finally, take their brethren into consideration. Sa madalit salita, hindi ka soloista sa Christian life. May kapatiran. Katina niyo si Paul. Now, there was a disciple, Damascus named Ananias. Why do you think God mentioned them? Kasi si Ananias ang nagpray para sa kanya. Si Ananias nag-disciple sa kanya. Naintindihan niyo? Siya, si Ananias kasama niya nagtumutulong sa kanya. Hindi lang yun. Tinan niyo sabi ni Paul. Si Ananias ang nagpray para sa kanya para tanggapin ang Holy Spirit at siya rin ang nagpray para sa mga gumaling sa kanyang pagkabulag. Tama? Sir, bakit hindi na lang siya? Lord, I pray, heal me. Bakit hindi na lang siya? Bakit kinahan si Ananias? Kasi hindi niya pag-aari ang Holy Spirit. Yan ay buong katawan ni Jesus Christ. Now, tinan niyo po, and he was baptized. Now, tinan niyo, and he took food and was strengthened now for several days. He was, look at the words, with the disciples who were at Damascus. Ibig sabihin ng disciples, followers of Jesus. They were there. Hindi siya nag-solo. Now, tinan niyo ha, but their plot became known and they were also watching the gates day and night. Tama? And he was really waiting for him to be killed. Anong ginawa? But his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a large basket. Sino tumulong sa kanya? Kapatiran! Now, kaya isipin mo, hindi siya magtatransform to, to, to become a terrific person kung walang tumutulong sa kanya. O ito pa, when he came to Jerusalem, kasi ganito ang kwento niya, di ba? He came to know the Lord sa road to Damascus. Then when he was in Damascus, he started being discipled and discipling. Then he went to Arabia. Then he went back to Damascus. Then, ito na yung many days later, he was, di ba, tinakas. He escaped. Then he went to Jerusalem. Nagkakanid yan. Upon, ano, upon arriving in Jerusalem, he looked for other disciples. Kahit tayo, kahit Christian tayo, pa nagbiyahe kayo, ang unang mo hanapin mga Christians. So they looked for Christians. But they were all afraid of him. Kaya kilala siya eh. Siya nagpapatay kay Stephen. Kilala siya. But Barnabas, who buti na lang may Barnabas sa mga Christians, took hold of him and brought him to the apostles, described to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had talked to him and how at Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. Kita niyo kung gano'ng ka-importante ang kapatiran sa Panginoon Diyos? Now, si Paul has all the reason hindi niya kailangan ng kapatiran. Bakit? Because he believes that he received the message directly from God. 
Pero kahit nakareceive siya, alam mong naintindihan niya ang katawan. Bakit? Kasi marami ngayon sabi, eto nareceive ko talaga kay Lord. Pero hindi sila nagsasabit sa leadership. Wala silang pakialam. Hindi sila nagsasabit. Kasi feeling nila, sila lang ang nakakaalam dahil kinausap sila ng Holy Spirit. Kung talagang kinausap ka ng Holy Spirit, willing ka to be corrected, to listen to the brethren. Paano ko nasabi? Tingnan natin. For I would have known, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received from man, nor was I taught, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Wow, big time. Tama? But when God, who has set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. Habi niya, nor did I go to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went way away to Arabia and returned once more to Damascus. Ba, ayaw? Ba, sarili lang? Ayaw makipag-usap sa iba? Relax lang, hindi pa tapos. Then three years later, I went up to Jerusalem to become acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. So, usap sila ni Cephas. Usap sila. Ano, bakit na sila nag-usap? Oh, tira niyo ha. It was, tatalo na ako ha, it was because of a revelation that I went up. I submitted to them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but I did so in private to those who were of reputation for fear that I might be running or had run in vain. Nagpipreach na ako. Eh, baka naman mali pala ang mga pinatuturo ko. Kaya sinabi ko sa kanila, sa mga leaders, men of reputation. Tingnan mo nga, tama ba? At pag binagbasa niyo tuloy, buti na lang, walang pinagkaiba. Ah, naintindihan? Yung iba sa atin, may kanya-kanya ng turo dahil natanggap sa pangin, pero ibang iba! Bakit? Kasi they're not willing to submit. Kasi a real test of love, willing to this, hindi ka pwedeng mag-transform to a loving person kung wala kang kasama. Gusto yung malaman kung kailan ka matututo magmahal? Pag nakasama ka na talagang sa katawan ni Kristo. Umaten ka ng D-group, dahan-dahan, matututo ka magmahal. Makikilala mo yung mga taong umaaten lang doon, walang dala, pagpunta, kakain lang. Pag uwi, may dala. Oh, bigla, oh, di ba? Sa una, kain ka ng kain. Banda ko, kain ka na ng kain ah. Di ba? Pero doon ang totoong pagmamahal. Sige, uuwi mo. Kung wala ka, uuwi mo. Maluwag ang puso mo kasi alam mo, this came from God. Go ahead. Hindi yung, oh, ayan, sige, kainin mo na. Lamunin mo. Pero noong una, I love you, brothers. I love all of you. But you will only know when you are being tested. When you see their imperfection, when you see the evil in them, then you will know. Kaya ang dami nag-asawa, Noong una, I love you forever. Diba? In sickness or in health. Oh, totoo naman. Noong unang taon, Oh, sweetie pie! Meron kang sipon. Naku, mag-ingat ka. Oh, ito, bibilang kita ng gamot, ha? Inom ka, inom ka, inom ka, inom ka. Uh-huh. On the second year, Sweet, ano ka ba? May ubo ka na naman. Mag-ingat ka naman ng konti. Oh, inom ka ng gamot. Diba? Noong ikatlang taon, Pwede ba? Tahul ka ng tahul dyan, parang aso. But there you will really understand what love really means. Nagkakaintindihan. Kaya mga kapatid, ito si Paul. He, he transformed. Why? Because he allowed Jesus Christ to call the shot. He allowed, as in, he humbled himself in prayer. He, he as in, he, inst- uh, he relied on the Holy Spirit. He instructs people to trust in Jesus. He is willing to suffer for the Lord. And he took the brethren into consideration. He knew that he cannot grow by himself. Kaya sabi ng Bible, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. When the body grows, meaning to say, every part of the body grows. Amen? But it will only happen if everybody would supply everything needed for the body to grow. I praise God kasi sabi ni Paul, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because He considered me faithful, putting me into service even though I was, look at the words, formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent aggressor, yet I was shown mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was more than abundant with the faith and love which are found in Christ Jesus. 
It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. And let me just say this, yet for this reason, I found mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might demonstrate His perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in Him for eternal life. Friends, if you feel na parang di na tao magbabago, wala na taong pag-asa, let me tell you this. God was willing to change Paul from being a terrorist to a terrified, to a terrific individual in the eyes of God. Sabi ng Lord, you might think I'm so bad, but remember this, His grace is much more abundance than your worst as in character that you can ever have in your life. And He's willing to change you. He's willing to transform you. Papano? To be transformed, we need Christ. Confess your submission to Jesus. Humble yourself through prayer. Rely on the Holy Spirit. Instruct others to trust in Jesus as in suffer for the Lord and take our brethren into consideration. Shall we just close our eyes and bow down our heads? Panginoon, salamat po. You know everyone in this room. And thank you, Jesus, that in you we have hope in you, we believe that you are able to change a terrorist to a terrific person in your eyes. Lord, I pray that as you have changed Paul, who persecuted you, who persecuted the church, and you personally, you took it so personal, Father God, but, you, but nonetheless, you saved him and used him for your glory and honor. So I pray that everyone in this room would, have, would hold on to that hope, O oh God, that you can use us, you can transform us from bad to someone terrific for your kingdom, someone really worthy of your glory and honor. So, Lord Jesus, we come before you, we submit ourselves to you, and I pray to continually use this ministry to reach out to more people who, needed trans who need transformation that you alone can provide. Thank you, Father God, and continue to speak to those who have not known you yet, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, do not allow them to leave the place without really acknowledging your, Lord, their Lord, your Lordship in their lives. So, Lord, I pray for every one of us, may we truly confess that you are our Lord, that you call the shots. Lord, may we, humble, may we be humble enough to really always seek you and pray before you, knowing that we cannot do anything apart from you. Lord, may we rely on your Holy Spirit as in we are to walk moment by moment with your Holy Spirit, as you have called us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, O God, that we may not satisfy, that we would not satisfy the flesh and the desire of the flesh. Lord, I pray to give us the courage, give us, Father God, the confidence in you to instruct people to trust you, as we have experienced to trust you, Lord our God. And I pray, Father, that no matter what happens, may we be always prepared Lord, to be willing to take the privilege of suffering for you if need be. And thank you, God, that you will always strengthen us with the presence of our brothers and sisters. So let us not forget to take them into consideration in our transformation. Thank you, God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.